انت العداد عندك يا الاحمر يا ابو وهذا من الجهه الثانيه بعد اي شغله Early morning, October 7th, Hamas's Nukhba force, still in their lairs, turn on the cameras that will record their attack and the massacre to follow. Along with tea and trail mix, the terrorist on the left lays out this bag. That looks like drugs to me. Captagon. Speed drugs. See? This is the symbol of the Muslim Brotherhood, Allah Wahid, one God. Islamist text. Now the terrorists face the Israeli obstacle, four layers of fences, barbed wire, the old fence, earth mounds, and the three billion dollar smart fence. After the second blast, they make their way through the old fence and proceed to the smart fence. The terrorists have now invaded Israel. A stopwatch counting from the first explosion until the moment terrorist squad number one crosses into Israel shows seven and a half minutes. In that time, they meet no Israeli resistance. It's very well timed, based on extensive exercises. There is a surprise factor here, and their numbers. Their numbers is what tipped the scales in the crucial first minutes. On a different route in the Gaza envelope, Nukhba squad number three ambushes civilian cars. The radio is on. An ecstatic song is calling, Bomb, Burn, Leave No Zionist Alive. It seems you're even more upset when you see the terrorists. Because I see the vacuum. I say this with humility. We could have had hundreds waiting for them at the border. Most often, they knew exactly where to go. And when on site, they knew which places. Here, the terrorists come into view of Kibbutz Sufa. They also encounter fire from the adjacent military base, which stalls them. Having crossed the orchard, they are within reach of the army stronghold. What we're hearing is only AK-47 fire. You can tell that there's no IDF fire at this time. The outer fence of the base is breached. Fifteen minutes. That's how long it took this squad from the moment they crossed the fence till they charged the Sufa military base. The fight at the main gate of the base lasted several hours, thanks to the resistance of Israel's Nahal forces. This terrorist seems in charge of the attack on the base. He gives the orders, although no one calls him by rank. You see a commander sending his men forward. You won't see that in the IDF. The supposed commander catches up. The terrorists enter the barracks. There's almost no one there. Most soldiers in the base are fighting in the mess hall. Many of them are wounded, some seriously. Here, a terrorist films himself in the mirror. 
Fussing around documentation and the apparent orders from commanders inside Gaza for propaganda footage keep stirring quarrels. This is the Hamas's military radio, simple walkie-talkies with few miles range. They've used them for years. According to reports, especially in the foreign media, 8200 IDF signal intelligence unit stopped listening to those radios, which are probably the ones Hamas used in their exercise. Despite their injuries and lack of ammunition, those IDF soldiers still alive managed to hold back the terrorists. <laughs> After hours of Hamas controlling the base, Shayetet Navy commandos arrive and clear the base from terrorists. Meanwhile, in nearby Kibbutz Sufa, terrorist squad number four manages to enter. They struggle to open the gate, but they eventually succeed. In the attempt to halt the terrorists, Kibbutz security team member Oz Khubara is killed. Yeah? On their killing spree, these two will kill two civilians, Bernard Cohen and Ophir Erez. Then, finally, they are eliminated.